Hi, Dr. Paul Hader, Master Herbalist and Spiritual Teacher here. Well, you know what? This is probably the most simplest thing that a person can do to keep themselves healthy, but a lot of people don't do it. <laughs> I find it so interesting. You know, there was a study <clears throat> that was done and, uh, in the United States and in the UK, uh, United Kingdom, and they found in the United States, only half the people, after going to the bathroom, after doing defecating, uh, only washed, half the people washed their hands. <laughs> I can go to the mall here. I see guys come out of the stalls. You know that they, you know, did their business. And then they don't wash their hands and walk straight out. It's like, ah! <laughs> And, and it's even worse in the UK. Only one in five people wash their hands after going to the bathroom. I just like, wow, this is not good. And there's a lot of bacteria on our hands. And also they found that, you know, it's uh, really important to, even after you get out of the bathroom, to wash your hands again because a lot, all those things you're touching in the bathroom, you know, they get covered with bacteria. And there was E. coli, which is a big one. Everybody's, you know, talking about that and all this different uh, lettuces and different things that ha ha outbreaks happen every once in a while. Uh, all, all kinds of different things. There's uh, all kinds of different bacteria, Clostridium, and there are all kinds of Vibrio, all kinds of different bacteria, which are not good. And even when you flush the toilet, it, <laughs> some of that bacteria goes... 30 feet down the hallway. Uh, very interesting. So we need to keep our immune system good so that we can fight that off. But at the same time, a simple thing we can do is just wash our hands. You know what I mean? They actually did a study where they took culture plates and they went into an airport and people were about to get on their plane and they had them put their hands on the culture plate, you know? You should have saw what grew there. You wouldn't want to touch those people's hands or shake hands with them shake hands with him at all. <laughs> it was pretty bad. It was like, oh, no thanks. <laughs> really, really uh, um, amazing. And then they went, you know, cultured these things. It was like, wow, terrible. You could actually see colonies of different bacteria growing around the fingerprints. It was like, wow. Some had less, of course. Those are the people who, you know, Wash your hands on a regular basis, and I recommend anytime you can, wash your hands. Yeah. And also using those little antibacterial, you know, uh, bottles, squirt bottles that you can put on your hands that kill about 99% of the bacteria also are great. Uh, if you can't find soap and water, soap and water is the best. There's no doubt about that. But if you can't, you know, using one of those little antibacterial you know, squirt bottles is a really great thing and will make a difference and keep you from coming down with disease. You know, once we get that, we ended up touching our nose, we touch our mouth, and we end up ingesting it, and that gets into our system, and we start getting sick. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And uh, they wanted to do a study and find out a little more how it got there, so they put some ultraviolet powder on the handle of the uh, toilet, on the... Uh, the handle of the door, the bathroom, and all these different places. It was not bacteria. It was just wanted to see what was going on. And then they had people come out of the bathroom, and they shined a ultraviolet light on their hands, and of course, they lit up. And then they also found it on their face, right by their lips, by their mouth. They found it on their eyes, found it on their nose. They found it everywhere. So, wow, amazing, you know. If that's going everywhere, that uh, ultraviolet powder, of course, the same thing for the bacteria. And we have it getting everywhere, making us sick. So that's something to think about is to wash the hands. <laughs> it says in all the spiritual texts, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. You know? <laughs> and it's so simple to do. Absolutely so simple. And one of the things I think is really important is wash your hands long enough, too. And some people say, you know, say happy birthday, the happy birthday song and happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, wash it. And then say it again, wash it, and then you're ready. That, that's a good washing of your hands. It's a great way to go.
Also, there is the aspect of our own spiritual healing, which is washing away stuff also. And, uh, you know, some of our diseases kind of baffle what's, uh, the doctors, and they don't know what's going on. And some of it has to do with stuff that we have going on deep down inside in a spiritual aspect. So that needs to be understood. Uh, Swami Nectalanda, he said that we are first the clay, excuse me, the, the dirt itself, then water is added to us, added to us, and we become a pot. If we break the pot, it goes back and it becomes a clay again, or the dirt. And of course, you know, we're both imbued with that special magic of being alive. And there's no difference. So it's about whether whatever form we are, we are part of that spiritual being. Also, the Native Americans talked about everything is full of spirit. And everything has its own life. And they believe also that, you know, even an eagle in another life, in uh, what we call another dimension, uh, with the Hedrian Collider, we can actually say that, you know, there are multiple dimensions now that maybe that eagle has a human form in another dimension. We don't know. So that's very interesting. Also, in many cultures they also believe that the illnesses is the imbalance of the spiritual world and the real world and there was a very interesting study where a man was a master aikido master of a martial arts master of aikido and he was having terrible shoulder problems and they did a thermal camera imaging of him and on the thermal camera you could see is it was all all this energy around here going everywhere and uh, it was really hard. I mean, you could see the in inflammation going on there. And he did from the side and from the front. It was just, you know, a lack of blood flow also going in those areas. And then what they did was this very interesting process because he's gone to all the doctors and they could not figure it out. They couldn't he'd give him steroids, but that wasn't working. So they tried a different technique. These people were into alternative medicine. So they had him lay down. And they did kinesiology on him, you know. And uh, when he went weak, that was a, you know, not a, a, a no. When he went strong, he, that was a positive yes. And he asked about uh, his mother and whether there was anything going on with his mother. No. It was anything with his father. Yes. And grandfather. Yes. Great grandfather. Yes. Great, great grandfather, yes. Great, great, great grandfather, yes. And it got back down five generations that there was something in the male line. And it finally narrowed it down to something in the heart. And it was very interesting. And they did a clearing asking that the ancestors of his, every one of them, they asked every one of these ancestors if they would allow themselves to heal and then allow this Aikido master to heal also, which was the great, great, great grandson. And, and then they actually did a little prayer over him. And then they got up and did the thermal camera thing again. And you could see completely ch a whole shift and change within a few, about a minute of all the inflammation in this, these shoulders that he had. It was like, wow. Within a minute, it was like, wow, what a difference. So there is a connection to a divine and all those other beings that are part of our lineage back there. And sometimes if they have you know, issues that they didn't work on, they pass that down. They pass that down to the son. They pass that down to the daughter. You know, oh, I don't talk about my feelings. I pass that down to my, my children. Oh, I'm angry. I pass that down to my, my children. You know, I, uh, in general, just kind of hate life. And I pass that down to my children and on and on and on. And it just kind of keeps going in that direction until we do that healing. Also, there are some miraculous healings that take place when prayer takes uh, over and makes a big change. In fact, there was a man who had terrible prostate cancer on a scale of, they took out a big piece of tissue on a scale of 1 to 10. He was a 9, 10 of being a terrible cancer. And uh, they did radiation therapy and everything the chemo and everything, and it was still really bad. And they could not remove all of it. It was so extensive. So he belonged to a prayer group, and he was part of a, 
Christian and Catholic prayer group, and he was also a Buddhist, and he was a Buddhist prayer, prayer group, and they asked them all to, they have about 100 people to pray for him, and uh, he was on the phone with them. It was very interesting. He said, all of a sudden, I felt as like a, somebody put a brick on my chest, and then all of a sudden, it was lifted off. And he went back for a recheck on his prostate. And they said, well, the prostate looks better. I mean, in fact, we can't find any cancer anymore. And he said, we need to go check back on your original uh, piece of prostate uh, tissue that we took out. And lo and behold, the tissue had changed. Instead of being a 9, 10, it was a 2. And he said, how can this be? This is not possible. You know, that tissue can't change. We've had it in, you know, formalin all this time. There's no way that that can change. But I tell you, spirit and spirituality, there's no, you know, nothing in a way of timeline. There is no time or space in spirituality. Everything can be changed. The past can be changed. The future can be changed. Everything can be changed. So it was like, wow. And he got better. There's no doubt about it. He healed up and uh, he uh, has been actually focusing on doing spiritual work uh, for the rest of his life. And I think it's really very, very interesting. There's also another little boy who had terrible hip cancer. And uh, he was about 12 and he was in terrible pain. His father had to pick him up to take him to the bathroom. You know, a 12-year-old, yes, that's a big kid, really. And uh, uh, But he couldn't even put his foot down on the floor. It was such pain, and his doctors didn't know what to do because it was so advanced that they really just sent him home, and they expected that it would spread all over and he would die. And his mother heard about somebody in their town that did healing, and her name was uh, Eileen. And so he, he, it was a big portly lady. And she came up to his room and he said, you know, you mind if I touch your, your hip over here on the outside uh, just slightly with my hand? And she said, oh, he said fine. You know, so he did, she did that. And all of a sudden he felt this huge warmth, warmth this kind of moving into his body. And it was like, wow, I, I've... He said, I didn't feel a lot of the, you know, uh, radiation treatments and things, but I felt what this lady was doing. <laughs> and so that's all she did. She came back three or four times after that. And, you know, lo and behold, he got better. His uh, cancer disappeared. And so, wow, it was very interesting that this little boy was saved from cancer and he was allowed to have a, a long life. He ended up being in his 60s, so, uh, and then he died of something else, but that has nothing to do with the cancer at all. Very interesting. I find it amazing. Also, uh, there was a man who had a wonderful family, and his daughter had just had a little baby, and it was a preemie, and the uh, preemie had to be in the hospital, of course, and finally they didn't think he was going to survive, but he, uh, she did, a little baby, they to, and they took the baby home. And all of a sudden, in, in two days later, the baby was in very bad shape, so they rushed him back to the hos her back to the hospital and put her in you know, intensive care for preemies, and uh, they didn't think the baby was going to survive. And then all of a sudden, this man, that was his granddaughter, he was just beside himself because he loved that baby. And he started praying to God. And he said, God, take me. Take me. You know, don't let her have a life. Let her have a life. You can take, I, you know, I'm in my late 60s, early 70s now. And uh, you can take me now. Please take me. And he kept praying. He prayed for 24 hours. It was interesting. The next morning, he had a heart attack. He was a big, heavy man anyway. Next morning, he had a heart attack. And the ambulance people came, and they revived him. They put him in the, heart, in the ambulance and took him off to the hospital. And two more times, he died. And they brought him back and revived him twice. And then the, he went into a coma. Uh, it was interesting. At the very same time, all of a sudden, the baby got better. 
and the, they were able to take the baby home. And But the doctor said, you know, the man with a heart attack, the uh, grandfather, he said, no, he's been without oxygen too long. I, I think he's going to have brain damage. But it was one week later, he came back out of that coma, and he was totally fine. And uh, a very interesting true story about a man saying, you know, take me. Take me instead. And I think God said, I'm going to take you, but I'm not going to keep you. <laughs> and the baby was healed, and everything ended up working out great. So there is something else. Remember to wash your hands. <laughs> if you want to have, you know, keep from getting sick all the time, you know, it's colds, the flus, and all that kind of stuff. You know, even, you know, terrible diarrheas and uh, uh, salmonella, all kinds of things, not good. But also remember that you are a spiritual being and that we forget that we are spiritual beings. We need to understand that we are spiritual and much more than just this flesh and blood. So have a wonderful day. If you want to get a hold of me, my phone number is 831-869-9119. 831-869-9119. My email is drpaulhader at gmail.com. That's D-R-P-A-U-L-H-A-I-D-E-R at gmail.com. And uh, my consultations are free, whether it be herbal or spiritual. And I would love to talk with you. And my Skype address is Dr. Paul Hader. You can send me an invite. Also, you can uh, WhatsApp me uh, on uh, my phone number there. So that, that will work also. And if you can go on my Facebook page under Dr. Paul Hader, and you can message me at the, at the top there also. And my website is uh, www.paulhader.com, www.paulhader.com. And if you would watch those little uh, ads there, that helps to bring a couple pennies in our direction to uh, my wife and I. We appreciate that. And if you care to make a donation at the top there on my website, you can make a donation. And also the link is down below if you hit show more. And if you want to get a hold of me and forgot about all those numbers and everything, just hit show more and everything is down below. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. But above all, remember one thing. I love you.